Welcome back to Way of the Wrench, and on today's very special episode, we have finally gotten to the point in this build that I have been dreading for a long time and putting off for a long time, and that is the complete teardown of this cabinet so that we can start filling and sanding and painting and vinyling. So let's get this torn down. first question you're probably thinking to yourself right now as you're watching this video is why did you not do the sanding and the filling and the painting and the vinyling before you did all this work because now you got to take it all apart and do it all over again there is kind of two trains of thought on this and hear me out so there is nothing wrong with doing that however if you need to make some modifications or you make a mistake or you want to change something mid plans because it just doesn't work where your placement has to be etc you now have to either redo something or repaint and you have to be careful that you're not scratching up paint and scratching up vinyl artwork. Whereas if you do it the way I did it, you can figure out where things go and learn how it goes and make mistakes. And if there's anything wrong, it's still just in its wood shape. Anything that happens can be filled and sanded and painted and you will not see that anything has happened. I kind of like this point of view because it's like a, a classic car, custom car build. If you started doing all the paint on the bodywork first thing and then decided to put in airbags and you're starting to hack up the frame and do modifications, you are messing up all your paintwork. So I'm kind of a firm believer of doing that. Now that being said, this being my first cabinet, this is how I tackle this. If I was to make another cabinet and maybe even this exact dimensions and everything's figured out, I would definitely do the sanding and painting and vinyling before I did this. But um, if you're doing your first build, you may want to do it like this, like I did. That way you got room for error and mistakes and not have it affect the quality of the build after you're done. All right, now some of you are probably thinking, this is a ton of work to take apart and put back together. Why did you ever do this to yourself? You're not wrong. There is a bit of work that has to happen, but there's some things that we can definitely do to make this a lot easier and to help speed this up. And to top it all off, there are some things that we can actually improve on when things go back together. So for example, wiring, if, if you had some pretty nasty runs of wires everywhere, this is a chance for you to clean that up and start putting it into some nice uh, wiring looms or some channels for wiring. Uh, we also need to install a grounding wire or a grounding strap for all of the external metal components so that if something was to happen and a live wire was to touch something in metal on the inside of the cab, you don't electrocute somebody. So we need to run that and uh, finalize all of our stuff in here and make it look absolutely beautiful inside to show off to people. Now, there's another trade secret that I'm going to let you in on to get projects that you're not really looking forward to and you need a little burst of energy and some speed to do it. There is a special concoction that you can drink and it involves coffee, Coke, and Rockstar. And you gotta get the original stuff. All the other stuff doesn't work. If you mix these while you're drinking them, you will feel a big burst of energy that'll help you get through just about anything you need to do. So let's start tearing this thing apart. So the very first thing I'm going to talk about is the amount of times I have heard on the Facebook VPIN Builders group where somebody has dropped a tool or dropped something onto their monitor, instantly shattering it and making it completely useless and they're throwing out a thousand dollar monitor because of this. So the very first thing I recommend taking out of this is the Playfield monitor and anything else that has to come off for that to happen. So I've got my LED strips and my matrix and my lockdown bar. So that is very first thing to come out of here. Now, as you're taking these parts off the cabinet, you're gonna to wanna to have a system to be able to know where they go. And it's obvious that the big things like a lockdown bar or a matrix are gonna go there. That's pretty easy to figure out. But the big concern with these things is keeping these safe in the interim while they're off the cabinet. So play field, I'm probably gonna get a piece of cardboard and tape it up so the screen doesn't get damaged put it somewhere safe. Lockdown bar is going to get wrapped in bubble wrap. Matrix put away somewhere nice so that we are not damaging these components while we are fixing and painting the actual woodwork. Now the other thing is this is literally the last time I'm going to be playing this for I don't know a month, month and a half while I do all this work. So it's kind of like I said I've been delaying this as much as possible. This uh, hobby is an absolutely amazing hobby and I am totally sucked into these virtual pinball tables now. So it's gonna be quite sad for me not to play this for a while while I do this, but maybe that'll also be a motivator to get this done quickly. <laughs> oh, no, cut, stop filming me.
Okay, now with these nuts and bolts to keep everything organized, get yourself a box of Ziploc bags, put a strip of masking tape and use a Sharpie and just write what part those nuts and bolts go to and that way this will be super simple to put together when we're all done our painted vinyl. Now comes the fun stuff. So we've got all of these components here that have to come out and we kind of have an idea of where they have to go, but it does not take long to snap a couple pictures or maybe a 10 second video clip on our phone that we know exactly where stuff goes and there's no head scratching wondering where this part goes later. Now the other thing I'm going to do to keep my life a little bit simpler is I'm going to leave the wires attached to things like amps, disconnect the wires where they go to at the speaker and that way I can look at the amp and know which wire that's supposed to go to. So that'll make that easier. And another big thing I think in my mind is when I take the HDMI cables off the video card and the computer and the monitors, I'm going to use a Sharpie and identify which port I used. So that way there's no accidental switching of the port. And then when I turn this on, I've got my play field on the wrong monitor and vice versa and things like that. So it's time to get this thing done. And if you've got a label maker like this, you can go ahead and start making some labels for all the wiring to all the different buttons so that you know exactly where they go when you got to put it back together. All right, here we go. The final ingredient to our supercharged energy boost. Bottoms up. Oh, yeah, I can feel the energy now.
Oh, here we go, final stretch. All right, all that's left is these blocks that are on the inner walls of the cabinet here. And I think rather than trying to spray paint around them and have a difficult time, just I'll put in the extra work, take them off. That way I can have an easier and cleaner look when I spray paint the interior walls and then spray the pieces individually and I can screw them on after. So we'll take those off. We've got the rest of the drawer slide to take off, legs and the brackets, and then this thing is done. So let's go. It's a wrap at another video from Way of the Wrench. And now this cabinet is all torn down and ready for our next video, which will be coming up real quick. And it's gonna be a video on plugging all the holes and sanding and getting all the little prep stuff ready for paint, which I'll probably do in another, another video just to keep things a little short for you guys. So, uh, another kind of cool thing, if you wanted to watch this video in reverse, I guess you could really quickly watch me throw it back together all at once. And uh, those of you that attempt to do that, I'll put in a, a little hidden secret message that you can hear in reverse. If you haven't already, why don't you join us on Instagram? That way you can see what's going on in this cool shop in between videos. And until next time, take it easy.